How do we choose between ready mixed or hand mixed concrete for our home extension projects? And how do we even quantify the mix? If you're thinking about managing part or all of your build for your home extension project, stick around because I'm going to show you how with a little bit of preparation, you can reduce your costs and reliance on hard to find builders by taking care of some or even all of the legwork yourself. In a previous video, we talked about the foundation design and prep. And here I'll show you how to order the right amount of materials and what else you need in order to be fully prepared and budgeted for building your own foundations and footings. So in order to purchase, we need to first quantify our concrete and our reinforcement. In order to do that, we need to compare the cost of hand mixing this extension foundation versus the ready mix method where a lorry comes to deliver so we can make a decision. So let's start with hand mixing, which involves buying three ingredients, aggregate, sand, and of course, cement. I'd also advise getting a cement mixer as well as a decent wheelbarrow, a hose with a variable shower attachment, two decent shovels, big and small, something to protect the ground from around where you're going to be doing your mixing and some reinforced buckets to do your batch measuring. Once you get into a groove, you can just use shovelfuls a bit like a cook does with their spoonfuls of ingredients. The biggest quantity ingredient is aggregate and this is a random sized stone and gravel used to create the bulk of the concrete which the cement binds together to give it its strength and builders will sell bulk bags of 850 kilograms and which are 0.5 cubic meters in volume. All of this will become relevant in, in a minute and these bulk bags will be delivered by the merchants on their lorries or you can manage with the little 25 kilogram smaller bags but be prepared for a lot of lifting and use small bags where access is an issue. And sometimes we call this aggregate ballast. Then we need our sand, which will act to help bind the mix together. And sand adds bulk to the concrete and fills all the voids between the coarse aggregates and the cement. It also helps in limiting the shrinkage of concrete. And as per the ballast, builders merchants will sell bulk bags of sand of 800 kilograms, which are half a cubic meter in volume. Or again, you can manage with the 25 kilogram smaller bags if access for deliveries is a problem. Now, although it's fine to buy these two separately and mix them, I will always buy what we call all-in-one ballast where the sand and the ballast are pre-mixed. This minimizes the amount of mixing and hassle I have to do on site. I also find it's actually cheaper because it involves a lot less wastage. And finally, we need our cement. And as this is the ingredient with the smallest quantity, we'll usually be buying these for our mix in 25 kilogram bags. Now for the mix itself and for a foundation, I'll check the strength mentioned in the structural engineer's notes on my drawings, if I have some. If I'm doing a particularly small job, I probably won't be uh, having a structural engineer. And the thing we're looking for is the N for Newtons after the amazing Isaac Newton, where the strength is measured in what we call Newtons, as it's that that defines the strength and therefore gives us the mix ratio. Here it is, and I'll be using a mix of one part concrete to six parts all-in-one ballast. And if I wasn't using an all-in-one ballast, I'd be mixing at one to two to four, being one part cement to two parts sand to four parts ballast. For a mix of one to six, let's start with one cubic meter of concrete as our guide. So let's break down what's in one cubic meter of one to six concrete mix. Now I won't bore you with the maths, which revolve around densities and volume. Let's just take our benchmark from one 25 kilogram bag of cement. The weight of concrete 
produced with one bag of cement equals 25 kilograms plus 55, 57 kilograms of sand and 105 kilograms of aggregate. And one more thing not to forget, of course, which is 14 kilograms of water, which equals approximately 200 kilograms in total. Now, considering we said earlier the concrete density is 2,400 kilogram density and 2,400 divided by 200 is 12, that means we would need to multiply our quantities by a factor of 12. So if you've managed to keep up this far, thank you. <laughs> We're nearly there. For a cube of concrete at 1 to 2 to 4 or 1 to 6, we get 300 kilograms of cement, 684 kilograms of sand, 1,260 kilograms of aggregate, and let's not forget 168 kilograms, or in real world terms, 168 litres of water. And that makes the total weight of our cube of concrete at around 2,400 kilograms, which is what we were aiming for at the start. Turning that into measurable quantities, we get the following. 25 kilogram bags of cement, so 300 divided by 25 equals 12 bags. We're using 850 kilogram bags of all-in-one ballast at a ratio of two parts sand to four parts aggregate, so 684 kilograms of sand plus 1260 kilograms of aggregate divided by the 850 kilograms bags gives us 2.3 bags for each cube. Finally we need 168 litres of water and I'd uh, suggest you get these 14 litre buckets as gauges until you get a feel for the concrete and you can start just using water by eye. And so you need about 12 buckets of water assuming normal weather conditions and these buckets I buy from the local DIY superstore and they cost a pound each so it's a pretty straightforward thing to get hold of. Now if you want a full breakdown of how to do this I'll link to this other video which contains the spreadsheets I use and which you can download and where you just enter your mix ratio and your total amount of concrete in cube along with your local suppliers prices and you will get a fairly accurate estimate of your overall cost and your quantities required. I've used what's called the empirical method because I think it's the clearest way. Each method to calculate provides slightly different results, but you know, concrete is a nominal mix, especially when you're dealing with different quarries and different parts of the country. So it is actually a really good to use a couple of methods of calculation to double check your requirements. And that's exactly what I have done here. Right, that was a crazy amount of calculation, but now we've got our multiples for one cube and we can figure out the cost for one cube. We know that 12 bags of cement are £6 per bag, so we have £72 for that. We know that ballast is £60 per bag and we want 2.3 of those, which gives us £138. Obviously, uh, for the bigger quantities, we'd be rounding these up to full bags. And that gives a grand total of £210 per cube. On top of that, I'd allow for inflation of 10% on this, as I don't see prices going anywhere but up as we come out of the commodities and materials shortage. So if you are watching this in the future, add a percentage on to all the prices I'm quoting. And the further into the future you're watching, for example, two or three years, I would add another 5% on for each year. Alternatively, give your local merchants a call and they will give you accurate prices. On top of that, we need to include the cost of a cement mixer, which you can rent for around £60 a week, including the delivery and VAT. I'd always go for the electric version, as it's going to be easier for a novice such as you and I to set up. I'm imagining you'll have most of the other things being a wheelbarrow, shovels, 
big and small, a hose with the spray attachment and tarpaulins as we already discussed. Now let's compare this to ordering a cube of concrete from a ready mix company and as of 2022 the prices in my area are around about £190 plus a delivery charge. So that's almost the same as hand mixing with one huge difference. For our hand mixing cost there's no allowance for our time in the organising of the materials and the mixing. I hope it's obvious wherever possible, therefore ready mix companies are the way to go. I mean you are looking at a saving of days of your time to get all this mixed and delivered for you. Ready mix companies are the way to go for all but the smallest concrete jobs, however you will come across situations where a ready mix delivery solution is just not feasible and therefore the information I've laid out here should help you when you find yourself in these particular spots. For example, I will be using hand mixing when we do this garden room at the top of this fairly steeply sloping garden because access is impossible and we will have to just carry up bags one by one up to the top and hand mix with a mixer at the top of the hill. So there's a practical example of where I would not use ready mix. I hope you found this uh, useful and if you did please smash that like button it really helps me and I will see you in the next one.